Turkish Airlines Euroleague. I feel devotion. In this episode in the game of the week, Anadolu Efes produced a shock result over Real Madrid. We went to Moscow to follow the challenges between Russia and Greece. We talked to Baskonia's star man, Nemanja Bielica. Last but not least, the top three plays of the week. Sergio Rodriguez has become one of the most interesting faces of Spanish basketball via Real Madrid. Now in his third season in Madrid, he is getting to where he wanted to be when he arrived in the capital of Spain in 2010. To be a part of an almost unbeatable team. Real are proving to be a dangerous team because of their unlimited offensive talent, but they also have the best defense in the top 16. It shows that this team knows how to deal with a higher degree of toughness as the season has progressed and every game has become more important. We really concentrate more on defense. Uh, there are more pressure in the games, so it's, it's more difficult to score easy points and fast break points. Uh, we haven't shoot as well as we did on the first round, but we, we, we want to keep trying to, to score points, but always concentrate on the defense and, and, and rebound, rebounding. For us, it's very, very easy when we do both things. At this point in the top 16, Sergio has scored almost the same amount of points as he did in the regular season. Sometimes statistics are just numbers, but in his situation it could mean that he was ready to step up and give a bigger contribution against amazing opposition. It's easier when you got confidence. Uh, we all have worked a lot to be in, on, on this way and, and I, I pretty much I feel, I feel more comfortable. Holding a long-term deal with Real Madrid, he and several teammates were there in the 2011 Final Four. With that core and some big additions, Real are building a strong squad that are focused on the same goal, bringing the title back to Madrid. We have to have a, a good team, good teammates. We have to be uh, on the same way, not, not only on the, on, the, on the court, also out of the court. So for us, it's very important. And, and I think it will help us to win more games. In a battle for first place of Group E, our Game of the Week featured undefeated Real Madrid at Anadolu Efes Istanbul. The Turkish side answered to 10 early points scored by Rudy Fernandez with a great team effort to lead 23-19 after 10 minutes. Efes was in total control, taking a 13-point lead in the second quarter on their way to a wonderful 46-point half. However, Fernandez, Sergio Yul and JC Carroll brought their team to one possession at the end of third. led by one with seven minutes to go, thanks to six unanswered points. Jamon Lucas galvanized his team, putting Anadolu Efes ahead 69-62. Rail was still alive. Nikola Mirotic led his team to a one-point difference this time there was no buzzer beater glory for the Spanish team as Carroll missed the last chance and Efes ended their unbeaten run, tying their 6-1 record. Lucas was the face of the team in that game. He knows his coach by heart and he knows what to put on the floor to be effective. He did it by scoring 12 of his 16 points in the second half, shooting 6 for 10 from the field and adding 5 assists and 4 rebounds. We came out, we played hard, we, we had a lead, we should have kept, but we played hard and got the victory. 
we try to get to the final four. For me, I really don't care about stats tonight. I had a great game, but as long as we get the victory, I'm happy. The EuroLeague TV crew traveled to Moscow, Russia. It was to be a big week in one of the most fascinating cities of the world, as the reigning champions, Olympiakos Piraeus, were entertained by Himki Moscow region in a clash between the EuroLeague and Euro Cup winners from 2012. Before that, Seska Moscow was to meet Panathinaikos Athens in a prestigious matchup between two Final Four Kings. Together, they have won five of the last seven trophies. There was a lot of curiosity surrounding the Russian side, which had been working very hard day by day to react from two defeats in a row, an unusual situation for them. We are not in the shape like we really want. Last two, three games we don't, we don't play on our level. I cannot explain, maybe in some point we just uh, lose our concentration. You can lose, but you, you need to fight until the end, and what we didn't do. And uh, I think they, 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 this will never happen again. Panathinaikos Athens landed in Moscow on Wednesday. It was a busy day for Dimitris Diamantidis and his teammates. They went to practice straight from the airport. The Greens were welcomed by the glorious images of Seska's recent past on their way to the locker room. In the success story, Ettore Messina played a big part, having led the Russian team to two EuroLeague crowns. Panathinaikos' forward Jason Capono knew what to expect from a team coached by the Italian master. Actually, the head coach was the assistant coach oh, late last season, so I got to really know him pretty well. It's a disciplined team. Um, he's an experienced coach. Um, they have great players, so it's a good test for us. On game day, you could cut the tension with a knife. Seska knew they could not afford the mistake of underestimating the Greek side. Panathinaikos are coming after winning the Greek Cup. They will come here to win, but we know our, you know, our advantages and we will use this. We won the Greek Cup recently, but we are tired not only from a standpoint of our bodies, but also mentally. Now we are happy, but we must control that feeling to stay focused. Seska's will to instill a different mindset from the last home game was clear from the first quarter. Milos Teodosic led the way for the home side, scoring eight points in a row to give Seska a ten-point lead by the end of the period. Suddenly, Panathinaikos fought back with a great defensive effort, using their athleticism against Seska's power. Teodosic's buzzer beater gave four points to the Russians, but it was still anybody's game at half-time. Our target is to stay close to Seska throughout the whole game to have a chance to hit them in the clutch time. We must be careful when it comes to the small details. Rebounds, defense, the control of the rhythm. If we do that, we'll have a good chance in this game. Teodosic continued to impress in the second half. Not only did he score himself, finishing the game with 7 from 11 from the field and 20 points, but he also dished seven assists and set up many good plays for his teammates. Hard time for Panathinaikos, who had been put in their place by the hosts. A moment of cheer for the Greens came when leader Dimitris Diamantidis tied Teo Papaloukas as the EuroLeague all-time steals leader on 327. However, it was a bad day overall for him, something that can happen even to basketball greats. He is one of the best players in the last 10, 10 years who played in, in, in Europe. I really respect him so much, like a player, and you know, it's always nice, and, but also difficult playing with him. It was an all-Russian celebration on and off the court. While Sasha Kaun was getting himself in the zone, a Muscovite couple announced their engagement in the stands. Seska's big man played like a true dominator, capitalizing on the assists from his teammates with 13 points and a perfect 6 from 6 from the floor, 
but most importantly, he was an insurmountable obstacle for his opponents under the basket, blocking up eight rebounds and five blocks to end with a performance index rating of 30. I think that was, you know, very good uh, point of the game just to dam to try to dominate the, you know, the inside game because we were told then than them, you know, and uh, I, th I thought we did overall a very good job, especially on uh, Sofo, you know, he was a very big guy and very hard to guard inside. And I thought, you know, as a team, we, you know, the guys, when I was guarding him, the guys helped me a lot. His display more than made up for the absence of captain Victor Kriapa and earned him the B-Win MVP of the week award. Always when the one guy of the main guys out, the other guys have to take his uh, work and his responsibility like Sasha Kahn did today. He took all defensive uh, responsibility on himself. Seska won 86-69, but everybody accepted the result with a sportsmanship-like attitude. While the Panathinaikos players were packing their suitcases for their return flight to Greece, the Olympiakos Piraeus squad had just touched down on Russian soil. Their hotel was just a few steps from the airport terminal, a convenience which allowed them the chance to rest and relax before getting ready for Himki and the tough welcome the Russian side was preparing for the Reds. I actually just I kind of just enjoyed being in the hotel, um, kind of just enjoying like you know quiet time, just kind of be able to you know watch movies on my iPad and and. Uh, and on my computer, um, just kind of just really just chilling out. With the hard work of team meetings and a video session to analyze their opponent's game plan softened by a well-deserved nap, Olympiakos had no time for sightseeing. We go to the gyms, we go to the, the arenas to see the, I mean, the surrounding cities that we're in. And, I mean, even though we don't get a, a, a great opportunity you know, to be, I guess you could say, tourists or whatever, but you, I mean, you're still able to see a, a, a small glimpse of the cities and, and, and a small glimpse of the, of the culture. In the afternoon, the players chilled out a little bit, and it was time to head off to the arena and turn their attention to work. It's always tough games here in Russia. There's a lot of traffic and the stress to go to the gym, so it takes a lot of time, so it's a little bit strange games because it takes more than an hour to go to the gym, so it's everything about mental preparation. The Olympia Kos driver finally outmaneuvered the traffic and brought the team to the Himki Arena a couple of hours before tip-off. While his teammates went straight to the locker room, Kostas Papanikolaou gave the court a quick look over. After all, it would be the center of the action later in the night. The Himki dancers and staff were perfecting the last details before the big event. It was time for Olympiakos to start the warm-up with some individual work behind the scenes. Each player has his own routine and method to concentrate in order to get ready. We do this kind of individual work before every game. Then the players start working together. We try to wake up their muscles and also their concentration, so they will be well prepared for what they have to do. Kinky was all hunger and focus for this big event. there was also time to meet and greet some old friends. The game was bursting with energy from the first exchanges. Olympiakos knew what Himki could bring to the table. It's a team that uh, likes to play with pass, kick out, they can't penetration, they can't pass out, so we have to be ready to adjust on that. The Russian team started very well, wonderfully executing its plays to get some easy buckets in the paint sign that they had studied Olympiakos well. Now, I don't think we're exceeding, you know, anybody's expectations. I think amongst us in that locker room, all of us knew we had the capability of playing the best of our ability and, you know, doing things that could, you know, change people's perceptive of Kempi basketball, and that's what we're doing right now. Himki guard Zoran Paninic was a perfect orchestra conductor, dishing 13 assists to set the top 16 record in a single game. He's the leader of this team. Uh, he feels very comfortable in the court, and uh, I think more than 70-80% of the game of Kimki pass through his hands. 
but uh, he's also he's not alone. He has a lot of a great supporting cast. Thanks to the leading figure of Panenic, Himki reached a 13-point lead in the third quarter, leaving only two scores from the floor in 27 minutes to their number one threat, Vasilis Panoulis. Well, he's obviously the main focus. I mean, he's one of the best players in Europe um, this year in the past, you know, five, ten years. Incredibly, it was not over, though. The Reds are not champions without a reason, and once Himki started to tire, Olympiakos took control of the game. He scored 50 points in the last 16 minutes to reverse the situation down to a big impact from Kyle Hines, who scored 19 points plus 6 rebounds and some big plays by Spanoulis, who finally produced the key to unlock Himke's defence, ending with 19 points and 7 assists. At the end, Olympiakos ground out an 87-82 win to inflict the first home loss of the season on Himke. You know, for everything, it's, uh, it comes the first time that you will lose. Kim is a is a very good team, one of top eight, the best, best teams in Europe. They proved it this year. In first half, we were not concentrated. Our defense was unbelievable, soft, and very, in very low level. We made some adjustments. Um, instead of uh, instead of hedging out and being really aggressive on the pick and roll, we decided to uh, to sag back a little bit because they were scoring too many layups. They weren't really hitting uh, a whole lot of outside shots. They were just getting a lot of this easy, uncontested layups. So we figured that if they were they're going to beat us, they just have to uh, got to protect our paint first of all. Staying in Group F. Kahalabaral Vitoria were hoping to take advantage of Himki's defeat to claim third place all for themselves, led by their young Serbian star. The story of Nemanja Bjelica tells us how much the Serbian forward has improved over the last few years. He's averaging almost 11 points this season, 10 more than two years ago. He is now reaching full maturity as a player after adapting his game and fine-tuning his skills. This is my third year in, in Euroleague in this club, so uh, now I have an important role uh, and also, also I have you know, more, more, uh, more confidence. Um, I think because uh, last year I played position three, now I play like, like a four, so I have, uh, I have much, uh, much uh, open, open shots. There's still a lot of room for his improvement. He's only 24 years old after all, and he knows where he can get better to be more efficient. I need to penetrate you know, more. Uh, I need to play more like in transition offense. Uh, I think I'm good in that after you know, defensive rebound. I can uh, drive with the ball coast to coast. According to his coach, San Tabak, Bielica has everything he needs to become a world-class player. And Vitoria is a club that praises the value of hard work. Uh, Nemanja is uh, overall one of the most talented uh, young players in the Europe. How much Nemanja, uh, how far Nemanja will go, it's only depending on him. So Nemanja really, uh, talent-wise, there is no limit. Nemanja is a player who is, a cre uh, who is capable to play on the multiple position and really there is no limit for him. It's just a question how hard he's going to work and uh, uh, how tough mentally he's going to be because I think so for him to be more constant in his game, that's one of the most important things, mental toughness. Basketball revolves around having the right mentality based around a team effort. Nemanja is well aware of this and it is the most important piece of advice he received from his coach. We change a lot, you know, especially especially in defense. Uh, we, we play with uh, more more energy, and uh, you know, coach coach uh, uh, give confidence to every player. You know, this is very important for for this level. Going to the playoffs and winning the important games is the first step for Bielica in equaling the results of his idols. When I was young, uh, my idol was uh, I don't know Dan Bodiraga, you know. Everybody liked him, he was a great player. I think he was the best player with Djordjevic uh, in Serbia. Friday night in Siena, Nemanja gave his now usual double-digit contribution, 15 points, with a perfect two-point average, 
six for six. He also added seven rebounds and three steals. We couldn't avoid the impressive series of triples by Monty Pasky's shooters. 15 for 27 for Coach Banky's triple experts. After the break, when Cajala Barral was still leading 37-35, David Moss and above all Matthew Janning started their personal ballistic show, hitting seven of their eight three-pointers, taking Siena to a 17-point lead, 71-54. Pushed on by Daniel Hackett and with another long-range shot by Thomas Ress in the last quarter. In the end, Siena confirmed their magnificent form in this top 16, winning 85-74 and joining Barcelona at the top of Group F with six wins out of seven. While Caja Laboral is still third with the same record as Olympiacos and Himki. And now the top three plays of the week. Number three, Berlin, Germany. With the game on the line, Marcus Williams gets the ball, fakes and buries the game-winning shot with 0.6 seconds remaining. Watch that one more time. Number two, Tel Aviv, Israel. Marcelinho Huertas of FC Barcelona Regal with a behind the back pass to Nate Jawai for the huge jam. And the number one play of the week, Istanbul, Turkey. Jaman Lucas of Anadolu Efes collects the rebound, slashes past the Real Madrid defense and detonates the dunk. Tremendous. Real Madrid and Alba Berlin have played one of the most exciting games in recent years. It was the 2008-9 season, the last top 16 game in Group F. The German team were leading 82-75, following a great performance from Julius Jenkins and Blagota Sekulic. Then it was Raul Lopez time, steals and baskets to bounce back, crowned by an unbelievable jumper at the buzzer allowing Madrid to keep the leadership of the group just before the playoffs. Will they give us the same emotions next week? Any game between Fenerbahce Ulka Istanbul and FC Barcelona Regal can produce particular memories. One amongst them happened in the 2010-11 regular season. One of the most peculiar facts in that game was that amongst the top five scorers, Four of them were big men. Boniface Dong with 14, followed by Kaya Pecker with 13, and 11 each from Erasem Lorbeck and Fran Vasquez. Barcelona won on the road that time 75-69. Will Fenerbahce be able to stop the scoring and defending machine of Coach Pasquale's group next week? When two legendary clubs collide in the Turkish Airlines Euroleague, it can only be the game of the week. The venue this week? The Jalgirio Arena in Lithuania. The teams? Euroleague big gun Jalgiris Kunas and Panathinaikos Athens. Two former winners of the Euroleague, Jalgiris and Panathinaikos are chasing another title in 2013 and know the importance of this game to their playoff hopes. To open up the second half of the top 16, they face one another again. Panathinaikos comes into the game of the week with not only the superior record in the second phase, but also the confidence that comes with an eight-game winning streak against Jalgiris. Legendary players have participated in these games. Rajiskos Albertis and Mike Batiste for the Greens while well, Zagiris' last win in the series came on the return of one such player. Kunas and Lithuanian hero, Avida Sabonis. There have been few reasons to celebrate for Zagiris, however, since that memorable night. The losses to Panathinaikos have been frequent and at times crushing. Look no further than last season for a bad night for Zagiris, in which it suffered a 59-94 loss. Don't expect a washout this time around. 
Chalgiris may yet end the streak after coming close to the start of this year's top 16. A 67-66 win for Panathinaikos saw the slimmest margin of victory ever between these two teams. 11 unanswered points for Jason Capono on his Euroleague debut. Shistov Lavrinovic firing back for Jalgiris in the fourth quarter. An open shot for Durias Lavrinovic on the buzzer and a miss that meant Pana held on. Behind veterans Marko Popovic and Paulius Jankunas, Jalgiris is working to regain the momentum it enjoyed as a regular season group winner. Panathinaikos arrived with an ace up its sleeve. Forward Jonas Machulis, a Jalgiris graduate who has been reborn this season in a different shade of green. The playoff race blasts off again as the second half of the top 16 opens with a classic. Jalgiris v Panathinaikos in the next game of the week. Euroleague.